We're joined by David Bonson, who's the Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Your reaction to that inflation data, which sort of seems to build on yesterday's consumer price index number uh, that showed inflation rose right ahead of the election. Well, it uh, showed that it was up 2% month over month and 26 year over year, which was exactly in line with consensus. And with, as long as the shelter number... Uh, which represents close to 40 percent of CPI, is is 5 percent year over year, then I think it's totally unhinged from reality. Nobody in their right mind believes that market rents on new leases are going up 5 percent. It is the lag effect of the way they track it that is adding about 50 basis points. The Fed knows this. Uh, the PCE, which weights shelter much lower, is not reflecting the same thing. So I think that they can feel pretty good about that. And you see it in the bond yields as well, which have really stayed quite level. And even as the 10 years come up over the last month, month and a half, inflation expectations have largely not. It's mostly been in real growth expectations. So if you think that the inflation data we're looking at is kind of a, a bit behind the curve, what do you make of this week's uh, unemployment data? What does that tell you about where we stand right now with the labor market? It's very important for weekly jobless claims and monthly BLS to take three a week in the case of claims or three month in the case of BLS averages because there's lumpiness that we've seen all year. And time and time again, when it looks like the weekly claims are going to break out above 250 or when they were going to drop below 220, as you get three week averages, it smooths itself out. And we really do appear structurally set at a pretty benign level on weekly claims. I worry that that won't hold into the future. Uh, but nevertheless, right now, it's hard to have a narrative other than that there is a reasonably benign atmosphere on the job side. My bigger concern is longer term, which is labor participation. I still continue to be very distraught over the number of people leaving the labor force. So then what do you think, very briefly, uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell will say this afternoon? I think his talking points are pretty well known at this point. I think most of us could write his speech for him. They're data dependent. They're trying to get inflation to 2 percent and they want to avoid um, not acting in a way that will end up bringing economic pain later. What I think they say privately when the cameras aren't on is that there is a trillion dollars of commercial real estate debt resetting over the next year and a trillion dollars of corporate debt resetting in the year after that. And the real reason that they have to get the short end of the curve lower mm -hmm. is because of the maturity wall of commercial real estate debt and corporate debt. And I might add on Treasury as well. Yeah. 26 percent of the United States debt is locked to T-bills. And I think it's low hanging fruit for them to try to reduce deficit is bring debt service cost for Treasury down significantly. And that's the reason I believe they'll continue to cut. David Bonson, we're going to have to leave it there. Obviously, the debt story, one that we're going to be following over the next few years and the real estate market uh, as well.